Good morning, Philippines, and hello, world. It's Sunday once again, kaya ready na tayo. Ready na kami sa 12 o'clock mass dito sa Parish of the Holy Sacrifice. Habang yung aking anak is, ay, ayun, kumakain. Ah, tapos na kumain. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Philippines, and hello, world. Araw po ng linggo, kaya tara, tara, sino tayo? See you soon, and have a happy Sunday. God bless you. Once again, this is Love Lines. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, this is Love Lines. Have a good day, and God bless. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Love Lines. Good morning, Philippines! Good morning, Philippines! Hello, world! It's Sunday once again at uh, araw ng simba. So, tara, tara! Simba po tayo! See you later! Have a good day and God bless! Happy Sunday, everyone! Uh, araw ngayon ng linggo, kaya tara tara, ready na tayo, simba po tayo. 12 o'clock uh, noon, English Mass ang aming pupuntahan. So, tara. God bless. Have a good day and God bless. The stream is about to start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. On this 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time, we will encounter in the Gospel today the culmination of the... O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command, and to desire what you promise. That amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. Summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your father served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for He is our God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord, the lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. 
The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers who destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress He rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit He saves. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with a word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the Church. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise to honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. My, I, I'm, I'm not very good in French, but when I hear a conversation in French, especially at the beginning, when a, when a person is introduced to another person, when a person gives the name of the other person, the other person sometimes responds, uh, one word, and I, I, I like this word, enchanté. And I think if my, if my translation is correct, enchanté comes from the word enchanted. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you literally um, translate this to English, it would, it would be, you introduce somebody, and the other one would basically say, I am enchanted to meet you, or enchanted. Or in, in our present uh, way of speaking, we just simply say, nice to meet you. But the word enchanté actually comes from, from, from the word enchanted. I, I like this word. And yet, it also connotes a certain degree of superficiality. 
and it connotes superficiality because I, I, it, even in Filipino, for example, when we see somebody fall in love with somebody who isn't that attractive, we sometimes ask ourselves, ano kayong encanto ang nangyari, no? What, what kind of enchantment has this per, is this person under? And so the word en, 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 enchantment, enchanté, uh, enchanted, uh, has a very superficial uh, connotation. Now, I'm, you might be wondering why I'm, talk, why I'm, why I'm ask, talking to you about enchantment. It's because if you look at the gospel today, the gospel is the exact opposite of enchantment. It is disenchantment. We see the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, after following him for a while, finally at the end of the long discourse on the bread of life, find themselves disenchanted by the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, we see in the gospel of John the disciples murmuring among themselves, this saying is hard. Who can accept it? In fact, our Lord Jesus Christ himself even acknowledges this. And he uses an interesting word. He asks them, does this shock you? In short, their disenchantment is not just disenchantment. It is downright shock. And that was the word the Lord uses in the gospel today. Does this shock you? And then John says, as a result, of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. But there were those who stayed. There were those who didn't turn their backs to our Lord Jesus Christ. And even these people, the Lord acknowledges, may have been shocked by what he said. And so he turns to these people and asks them, Do you also want to leave? Are you also disenchanted? And then we have this wonderful response of Peter. There is another word to describe uh, to uh, for. There's another word uh, to replace the word disenchantment. It is disillusionment, and these two words are actually quite interesting. Now, there is a reason why why for 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 this disenchantment, for this disillusionment. In fact, we we see it in the gospel today. The Lord declared Himself to be the bread of life, and that was quite disillusioning to those who were following Him. We know, for example, that in the beginning, they wanted to carry him off as king because he multiplied the loaves and fish. They wanted him to be king because he fed them with bread. But now he was saying, I am the bread that will give you life eternal. The bread that you will take is my flesh and you will never hunger for more. And that disillusioned them because they were expecting something else. And there are many things, many teachings of our Lord besides the bread of life that can be quite disenchanting, that can be quite disillusioning. I was thinking of one, purity, for example. I mean, the way I would speak to, when I, when I speak to my fellow Catholics, when I speak to the young especially, the, the virtue of purity never comes into the conversation anymore. It is not looked at as something to be desired. In short, purity might be one of those t teachings that we have that can be disenchanting or disillusioning. Humility can be disenchanting also. I know many people who would admit that they are not the, most, the humblest people and because of that they will, they will fight other people. So humility and the teaching of our Lord regarding humility can also be disillusioning or disenchanting. I have a friend, for example, whose disillusionment with the church is over the issue of papal infallibility. She is a very good friend, and yet I also recognize why she feels very disillusioned with our teaching of papal infallibility. In short, there are many things about Jesus in his church that disillusions us, that disenchant us. I think the main thing that disillusions many of us Catholics or followers of our Lord Jesus is the issue of pain, of sickness, and of death. How can pain, sickness, and death continue to exist if we have a loving God? And yet pain, sickness, and death remain a part of our human condition because pain, sickness, and death are a product of sin. And sin remains as a part of our human condition. 
Sin will always be a part of our human condition and because of that, it's product of pain, sickness, and death. And yet, the genius of God, the genius of God is not so much to remove pain, sickness, and death, but to transform it into something that brings us much deeper life. The genius of God is whereas pain and sickness can lead to death, no longer is it that so. Pain, sickness, and death can lead to a much deeper life. The genius of God is, whereas pain, sickness, and death were dead ends before, now they are a doorway to much greater life and to much deeper meaning. Sometimes, when people approach me and tell me about their anger towards God, instead of telling them to not to be angry with God, I oftentimes encourage the anger. And the reason I encourage the anger is I believe that when we get angry at God, we get angry at a false image of God. And it is good to get angry at this false image of God. Similarly, I believe that disenchantment and disillusionment is not necessarily bad. Because disenchantment is basically to remove the enchantment. Disillusionment is to remove the illusion. Two words, enchantment and illusion, which are quite superficial. They do not go deep. And therefore, to disenchant and to dis and to disillusion is basically to remove enchantment and illusion, to remove what is superficial, to remove our our shallow ideas of God and our shallow understanding of God. Therefore, disenchantment and disillusion is not necessary, are, are not necessarily bad things. Disenchantment and disillusion are a natural step in our journey to God, in our journey of faith. We need to destroy our shallow, superficial understanding of God. And we see this in the Gospel. We see the disciples of Jesus now divided. People who were disillusioned, who wanted to leave him, and people who stayed. And those who stayed, like Peter, when he when they were asked, Would you are you also disillusioned? Are you also disenchanted? Are you also going to leave me? Peter said this wonderful response: Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have come to believe that and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. We see Peter, despite the general disenchantment that people are feeling, decided to ride it out, decided to go the distance, decided that despite the general disillusionment, he will see it to the end. And we see how this wonderful group of disciples who did not leave Jesus, despite the disenchantment, in the end became holy people became saints, became sharers of a much deeper life because they were willing to pass to the disenchantment as part of their journey towards God. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there was only one other person in that small group of disciples who was finally down by his disenchantment. It was Judas, and we know what happened to him. In conclusion, disenchantment and disillusionment are not necessarily bad. In fact, they are very important steps in our road to God. It is necessary for us to be disillusioned, to be disenchanted by our shallow interpretation and shallow understanding of who God is. In doing so, in embracing the disenchantment, in embracing the disillusionment and still continuing to follow God, we experience the deeper life and meaning that Peter and those who stayed behind experienced when they overcame the disenchantment and followed Jesus to the end. And so as I end this homily, I'd just like to ask a simple question. Are you disenchanted? Are you disillusioned? Well, good. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God.
as without end, we are claimed. Holy. The mystery of faith. O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Behold our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who is real food and real drink. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body and blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, says the Lord, and I will raise him up on the last day. We pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone. Happy Sunday, everyone. This stream has ended. Have a great weekend. This. Tapos na ang Misa, the Mars has ended. And happy Sunday everyone! Have a great weekend and have a great week ahead. Disenchantment, disillusionment. Some of the followers were disillusioned. Some were disenchanted. And it's good for us to be disenchanted and be disillusioned. Be real, yun ang ibig sabihin niya. Be real. See the things in it in its real and real, <laughs> real face. Magpaka totoo. So, 
Don't get disappointed. Don't get disillusioned if something that you expect of a person will not turn out it to be according to what you think it will be. Yeah, get real. Yun lang po. So, uh, the word today is disenchantment, enchantment, illusion. Huwag kang mag-illusion. Illusion. Huwag illusionado. Huwag <laughs> illusionado. Get real. Magpakatao tayo. Isipin natin ang bagay sa kanyang tunay. Tingnan natin ang bagay. Isang bagay sa kanyang tunay na purpose. Sa kanyang tunay. What's purpose? Tunay na layun eh. Ah, uh, robe sa mundo nito. So, yun lang po. Accept the true person according to what he is. And yung uh, reading about the husband and wife, the man and wife, the Jesus and the church, it's very nice. So, yun lang po. I'll be sharing soon and... Uh, have a blessed day. Have a great weekend. Have a great week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, this is Love Lines. Have a good day and God bless. And love me for what I am. Yan ang sabi ni Jesus. <laughs> Yun ang nakuha kong message for this. That's the song for this Sunday. That's all. Thank you. God bless. See you soon. <clears throat> Parang gusto kong kumanta. Love me for what I am. <laughs> You've just to love me for what I am. For simply being me. Don't love me for what I don't know what you say. And hope I uh, want me to be. <laughs> and if you're only using me to feed your fantasy, you're really not in love. So let me go. I must be free. <laughs> so that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, this is Love Lines. Have a good day and God bless.